Well, it's been quite a while since the last video, and some pretty interesting things have happened since then. And it all involves this fella, a model rocket named Falcon Bobby 2.0. If you haven't been following this channel, this is a model rocket, the largest and most powerful one that I've ever built in the three or so years that I've been doing this for. It's a project that I've been working on since about February of this year, and I've got a couple of videos on this channel discussing the uh, full production of this uh, model rocket, which there'll be plenty of links to and stuff if you haven't already seen them down in the description below. But anyway, what's happening with all this? I mean, the last launch attempt of this rocket was a comedic failure, and the last video that I made on this channel was me talking about why I wanted to make my own sugar rocket motors. It turns out making your own model rocket motors is 100% illegal unless you live in somewhere like the US. So that won't actually be possible. I wanted to make my own motors basically to try and solve the ignition issue that I had on the previous flight attempt of Falcon Bobby 2.0. However, now that I'm not actually allowed to do that, the only thing I was able to resort to was a interesting little ignition system design or overhaul that I discussed in the last video. I have a whole video on this on my channel, but Basically, in a nutshell, the problem with the last ignition system was that it had too many points of contact and it caused an electrical shortage, which is why only one of the three motors in the last flight attempt actually lit up, which caused not enough power and therefore the rocket kind of just like hovered for a bit before coming back down to the ground. This new design that I magically whipped up was designed to kind of make it more of a series and a chain reaction instead of a bunch of different things having to go to different places and have a lot less electricity involves because electricity is quite difficult to control. Let me explain. So we'll use this little square with the circle in the middle to represent the launch controller as you can see. Coming out of the launch controller is the launch wire with four alligator clips attached to the end but we'll just say two for this drawing because it only actually needs two for this system. Attached onto those is the first new piece of equipment that we're using in this little uh, system is the Klima igniter. The little black square at the end is where the actual uh, small bit of explosive charge is located and that's what's going to set off the chain reaction. So until this point there is going to be uh, no more electricity uh, involved in the system. Then attached to that is the tape match ignition tape. This stuff can be used very similar to normal tape and just sticks to anything you want it to. Including the three ignition sticks also from Klima. These will be uh, taped to the very end of the uh, ignition tape. And these ignition sticks are the actual things that will be inserted into the motors themselves. So basically, up until the end of the clean igniter, there is no more electricity uh, being used, and it's all just a chain reaction from there. And there's no other points of contact, unlike the last ignition system, so it should be a lot more reliable. So anyway, why did I not choose to do this in the first place instead of going on this whole make your own rocket motor ramble? Well, I actually did try and buy all the parts that I needed for this new ignition system, but there was a problem. For some really stupid and naive reason, I bought the igniters, the ignition tape, the ignition sticks, and the new motors all in one package, which understandably got seized at customs because it was a good hefty amount of explosives. And so after getting about 60 to 80 euros worth of that stuff seized at customs, that's why I resorted to using my own motors because I just didn't really want to have to deal with importing things from different countries because there's nowhere in Ireland that actually sells anything that I need. But after figuring out I couldn't even make my own motors as well, I was pretty stumped until recently as to how I'm ever going to get Falcon Bobby 2.0 to fly again. But all hope was not lost because I had just conjured up the genius idea of how to actually get this thing flying again and you're you're not gonna believe this plan was now try and stay with me here because it's pretty complicated what i did is i ordered the same things one at a time so instead of buying the ignition sticks and the tape and the motors and the igniters i would just buy one of those things wait for them to arrive at my doorstep before ordering the next so that hopefully there wasn't it wasn't too much at once and it wouldn't get seized this obviously took a very long time because it wasn't all in one go so it took multiple weeks and that's why it'd be a pretty big gap in between the last video and this video it's mainly just been waiting for things to arrive but eventually this genius plan of mine actually worked and we have all the components that we need to actually make this ridiculous <laughs> design come to fl fruition. And now we had all the things that we needed to launch this thing again. However, there was one thing 
that needs to be done before actually flying this thing again. And that was to test whether this almost completely made up design for an ignition system actually works. I also decided to take one of the motors that didn't actually light up in the previous flight attempt to use on this test as well to see if this whole thing not only lights up in a decent fast time but can also actually light up an SDS motor because technically these are all Klima um, products from a company called Klima. The motors are from a company called Estes. Um, they're two different companies however they're both very similar motors in design so in theory these can they can still work on either one of these motors. I set up the ignition system pretty close to what my random whiteboard drawings drew. I also taped the sticks into the motors to hold them in place. This was probably going to be a necessary thing because the sticks aren't actually completely flush into the motor. They do fall out pretty easily. So, However, taping this stuff up actually shed light on another advantage that I didn't even realize when thinking about this thing. During the last flight attempt, because the Estes igniters that I previously used were so short, it meant that the very fragile and expensive alligator clips on the launch controller were sat right below the exhaust of the motors and two of the wires actually burnt through, possibly damaging them to a point where they couldn't be used. I've had this happen on the previous launch controller and no matter what repairs we tried to do, it just wouldn't work. It wouldn't actually send enough currents to light any more motors afterwards. Thankfully, this new launch controller that I'm using has four alligator clips and only two of them were pretty damaged. The other two were actually not that damaged at all. Also, the alligator clips won't be placed anywhere near the exhaust with this new design, thanks to the extended igniter and ignition tape. So it'll just prevent any more damage on this launch controller anymore. I really wish I discovered this design sooner because it would have saved me a lot of trouble in the past. With all this in mind, it was time to light this thing up, but try not to blink. Did you catch what happens? Probably not because as soon as I pressed that button, the whole thing lit up in probably less than half a second, which is really, really damn fast. However, this whole thing of it going up really fast is quite essential because we're using three motors for Falcon Bobby and we don't want one to go off and then another one to go off a second later and the last one like five seconds later. It's just gonna cause a lot of imbalance. And the first thing that happens is that the Klima igniter, the little tip on the end, uh, bursts into flames. The next frame after that, you can kind of see that the tape match ignition tape starts to light up. And another thing that's really cool is that you can actually see the flames going through the ignition tape. The next frame after that, I, it looks like the first little ignition stick. Uh, lights up and I think this frame the fourth frame is the where all the ignition sticks are light up and after a few more frames The motor actually lights up fully. So yes, this whole thing was really really fast Now the only thing left to do was to apply the same success to the actual flight easier said than done Probably we'll just have to find out soon. We're hoping to launch in the next few weeks However, I am quite busy currently with other projects on my other YouTube channels. So the launch will probably happen soon after Christmas, probably within the same week. And of course, the first footage and photos and everything will be out on Instagram and then a full discussion probably later in January. So make sure you stay tuned, follow us on Instagram for the latest updates. And thank you so much for tuning in and being on this whole journey with me. Hopefully the next time you see me, this rocket won't look as pristine and will hopefully be somewhat burned, somewhat torn, but hopefully still in one piece. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.